Hey you guys, it's Shiloh with D20 Academy and this week's adventuring tip is a Monster Monday where we take a D&D monster. I'm going to kind of go through the basics of it, kind of give you guys a general description and then how you can use it in your campaigns, in your stories. So maybe you're a GM who is looking for a new monster to throw in, uh, wants some inspiration for their next adventure or plot arc or next encounter that they're building. Um, well, these Monster Monday videos are just for you. Um, these will help you um, figure out uh, maybe what, what you want the next plot arc to be, give you some inspiration, maybe to use these monsters in, in various things, um, and just, just to help you out um, from GM to GM. So today, uh, we're talking about the Gith. So let's kind of jump into the Gith real quick, kind of their history and culture and stuff. So the Gith were once a race of people um, that were slaves of Mind Flayers, or Illithids, um, which is another D&D monster. I actually have, D20 Academy has a whole episode, a whole Monster Monday episode, hour-long podcast episode on um, Mind Flayers, if you want to go check that out. Um, but this this race of Gith people um, were uh, slaves of Mind Flayers a long, for a long time, a long, long time ago. Now, to give you a quick description of kind of the Gith, it's kind of, they're humanoids, it's kind of like if Voldemort had like yellowish green skin and hair and pointy ears. That's kind of what they look like. Um, and so they were slaves of the Mind Flayers of the Illithid Society. Um, but there's this one leader, uh, I think her name was Gith or something. Um, she rose up and she led her people in a revolution against the Illithids and they were finally free but then two factions formed, and they disagreed on the future of the Gith and what they should do and where they should go. So they split into the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zarai. So, let's jump into the Gith Yankee first. They are warriors, raiders, pillagers, slayers, um, lean towards more lawful evil alignments. Um, they are selfish, and they pillage, and they loot, and they hunt down uh, mind flayers. Now, they live on the astral plane, in um, a fortress called Tunaroth, which is uh, a city built on the corpse of a six-limbed god. And they are led by the dread Lich Queen of Lockith, um, and they have a very strict militaristic society. Um, they're all like soldiers and fighters and sorcerers, and um, they are very adept at martial and magical and, you know, scouting. They're um, very good at all this. Now, in the astral plane, you don't age, so they have to bring their young into very secretive pockets in the material uh, plane, right, like in the Forgotten Realms or in, in the world, um, to raise their young. And they also have a special relationship with dragons. So at the beginning of uh, when the Githya Githyanki broke off, they made uh, allies with Tiamat, who is the uh, evil god of chromatic dragons. And um, she has she gives them uh, red dragons typically um, so that they can ride and train and grow. Um, and so Githyanki typically like um, pair with these red dragons and then ride with them and pillage with them. And then once the dragons get to a certain age, they can leave off on their own, taking all the loot that they pillaged with them. And so there's kind of this symbiotic relationship with them. She also mentioned that all Gith have very uh, powerful psionic abilities. Um, so they all kind of have some some, some mystical um, psionic powers, um, but the Githyanki are forbid from trying to use their psionic powers to manipulate or alter um, their dragon companions. Now, the Illithids Mind Flayers, they also have these, like, sky ships, these sky vessels, um, and the Githyanki have also kind of emulated that and also have their own kind of sky vessels. So when they raid, they use dragon riders, um, they use raiders who are on these long uh, sky ships. Very terrifying force. The Gith Zarai went to Limbo, um, and they live in flying uh, fortress cities. Um, now, Limbo is the plane of chaos, um, and it's just chaos and destructive forces, so it's very hard to live there. But the Gith Zarai are monks and scholars and mystics. Um, they, they hone their psionic abilities. And in these fortress societies, um, they're able to use their collective psionic power to hold at bay the chaotic forces, chaotic tides of Limbo. Um, now, they, each society has uh, someone called an Anarch, and the Anarchs are kind of like the leaders of each society. They are the conduit of the psionic power from the society, and they use that to push back Limbo, and they also use that psionic ability to manipulate time, energy, uh, create matter, gravity, stuff like that. 
All right, so that's kind of the Gith. Uh, the Gith Zerai are more peaceful, a little bit more pacifist. Uh, the Gith Yankee are raiders and pillagers and stuff. Um, both have psionic capabilities and both are at war with each other all the time uh, because of their disagreement in the past. And then also, every once in a while, they also strike at their old um, enemy, the Illithids. So, to use in your campaign, well, the politics and warfare between these two races, these two subsects of uh, Gith, is really interesting. It can make for a whole campaign. It can make for maybe just a plot arc where the party has to go in uh, into this conflict, maybe choose a side, maybe play both sides against each other to further their own goals, whatever the party's goals are in this plot arc. Um, but but to get involved in these politics, this war between these two uh, races of Gith uh, are, is really interesting and really cool. Um, now, the Gith Yankee may provide useful allies to the party if the party is hunting after illithids or trying to defeat mind flayers because the Gith Yankee are very uh, angry at their old uh, slavers and are constantly trying to raid them and kill them. Um, actually, the rite of passage to become an adult Gith Yankee um, is to kill an illithid and then bring the head to the queen. Um, so if your party's going after them, maybe they'll, they're allied with Gith Yankee, but once again, Gith Yankee are evil and corrupt and dangerous and unpredictable, so they may provide um, kind of in interesting allies um, during this adventure. Now, town, cities, and settlements may also need protection from Gith Yankee, who are raiding with their dragon raiders and with their sky ships, and maybe that's a quest that the party has to do, is help out this town, deal with these Gith Yankee raiders. Um, or maybe hunt down Gith Yankee pockets where they raise their young. These are typically guarded by red dragons. Um, and maybe, you know, deal with, with the, the young before they're able to grow into these, um, you know, pillagers and raiders. Maybe the party needs information or special training from the Gith Zarai in their floating fortress cities, maybe from those monks or those scholars. And they have to travel to Limbo and gain the trust and ally with the Gith Zarai to maybe learn information from their libraries of knowledge or learn some kind of special training or something like that. That could also be interesting. The Gith as a whole are a very interesting um, breed of monsters in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, they're really cool and exciting and interesting, and there's a lot you can do with them. You can check out even more information about them um, in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. They have a lot of lore on them, or just by looking them up on the internet. Um, they are really cool monsters, and I really hope you guys can uh, figure out a way to use them in your campaign. That does it for this week's adventuring tip um, for this Monster Monday, of course. Um, follow, subscribe, whatever you're watching this on. Comment below um, your experience with Gith or if you have any questions about them or what you want to see in the next Monster Monday. Of course, if you are a GM looking to build your own campaign, to launch your own campaign, go ahead and hop over to d20academy.com. Guys, thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next week.